And when you see a f-ing tough, gnarly, small gym where there's quality jiu-jitsu, but it, the place never seems to grow, they're usually the ones that are doing a shit job of looking after beginners. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another Bulletproof for BJJ podcast. You need a BJJ buddy. That's right. I'm talking to you. If you started jiu-jitsu and no one really helped you and you felt lost when you walked into the academy, that makes plenty of sense. And one of the biggest, biggest gaping holes in jiu-jitsu is we do not have a buddy system. Now, this came to my attention recently, uh, just integrating with a new workplace and they paired me with a buddy. And the guy just hung out with me the whole time, showed me the ropes, this goes here, don't do that, When you, this is a problem here. And I was like, wow, that's cool. And anyway, very quickly, I got the hang of things, which is sweet. But still, I knew that if I had a problem, my guy, Malik, by the way, Malik, the, the whitest Assyrian you've ever seen. Mm. I just thought he was like a scrawny white guy. I told him that he got insulted. He's like, bro, I'm Assyrian. I'm like, cool, your people conquered lots of Europe I respect <laughs> but uh yeah he, he's my guy now he's my homie and um even now like he's not that I need the help but I know if I have a question he's he'll hook me up and I feel like there's so many questions in jujitsu one of the huge things we miss is having a helper what do you think about this idea Joe yeah I love it I've actually thought about it in the past with we thought I've thought about it with the gym here like having a formalized buddy system Mm. and uh we do it in an informal way yeah you know and it's like you kind of have those members who are like veterans and they know that like they like looking after new people and so you'd be like oh hey big carl yeah can you you take sam here under your wing for the for the next you know hour Mm. and be like oh hey bro come lift with me you know kind of thing yeah and you're like it's perfect um and i have thought about it for jits uh i think it would go so well um just to clarify on your idea are you saying that their buddy should be someone who's also starting or it should be someone who's experienced? No, it's someone who's experienced, but they don't have to be like a brown belt or a black belt. I mean, it could just be a really... Yeah, just someone that's well, been around. A well-meaning blue belt. Yes. You know, some, but someone who's been there a couple of years so that, one, it takes the responsibility off the instructor because instructor's got some bigger things to do as well. Instructor's got a role. Yeah, instructor's got to get make, my training in. Got to make it happen. <laughs> Sorry, new guy. <laughs> Can't, can't, I can't be dealing with you tying your belt in the north-south position. Wild. But um, it's also just that it, it occurred to me that it made me feel better integrated to the place. I was like, wow, okay. It didn't it, – I wasn't like all warm and fuzzy like, oh, I love this place. But I was just like, oh, I know my position and I know who to go to if I don't know what the f*** is up. You know, and I think that's often a problem. You're like, who do I ask? Can, can I talk to the purple belts? Like, you know, if you go, oh, no, that's my person. You know, in a, in a sea of faces of strangers and you already feel a bit, bit insecure, whatever it might be, you're like, no, no that, that's my guy or that's my chick. They'll, they'll help me out. Yeah. I think this is – I can't even believe it's not done and maybe there is a random gym out there in the world that does it, but I have never been to a jiu-jitsu academy where they pair you up with a buddy. I mean, you kind of make your buddies, but that takes a little while to break through. Like when was a – you had mentioned um, in your earlier in your um, jiu-jitsu journey, Joe, that Bean became your counterpart or nemesis. Or nemesis. <laughs> the, the antithesis of a buddy. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. My bad. <laughs> my bad. Well, I mean, they're, they're a counterpart, aren't they? No, uh, you know, yeah. Protagonist, no, we, villain. We, we had that. But, but it was also um, – Who was your first jiu-jitsu? Did you have a jiu-jitsu mate when you got into it? Uh, it was just me against the world, baby. No. It was um, <laughs> me and my guillotine, baby. Yeah, no, I, 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 I've had, you know, yeah, like good, good jiu-jitsu mates. But no, in that early stage, it was just, it was just war. Yeah, it really was. And so, like, I, I can kind of remember clearly uh, learning things that were sort of cultural norms mm-hmm. that I had to learn the hard way. Yeah. Because no one kind of said, oh, hey, when, when we roll, like, it's, we don't go to the death like yeah. every role or, you know, or what? like, hey, you know, when what? you like, when you've got a new person, like, don't do a jump guillotine on them. <laughs> like, that's actually pretty hectic. <laughs> you know, like, you're like, that's what they do in the UFC. Yeah. But I'm like, but you taught me that technique yesterday. But I'm wearing a tap out shirt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like those, yeah. those things. And it, it seems really silly. So I think once you have a level of experience, you don't need it. 
But when you're new to the game or new to the gym, there's like, if you're new to the game, there's huge like general jujitsu cultural things mm. and technical etiquette you need to understand. Yes. But then also there's that gym specific like culture that that even if you're like a, a brown belt showing up at a new gym, it would make sense for someone to be like, hey man, let me just word you up on how we do it here. Yeah. You can ask anyone to roll, but check it out. You can't ask that guy because, <laughs> you know, whatever, he's a red belt. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like shit like that. Yeah. For sure. No, I, I agree with that. And I think I've seen two examples of similar uh, approaches, but not a, like a buddy system. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want the best gear for BJJ, you need to go to parryathletics.com. These are our guys. They support the show. George, great guy, great creator, awesome colors, awesome styles, and also the best fit. It feels great. And that's the thing. It's not just that it looks good, it feels good. And the thing that for me I love the most is I can wear the stuff at jujitsu, but then also they've got that, that other side, the cool side where you can wear it off the mats. And they are our exclusive partner in apparel. If you want to get bulletproof gear, you've got to go to parryathletics.com. And when you buy anything at checkout, enter bulletproof20 for 20% off. Oh, yeah. So, for example, I used to train judo at Resilience uh, Training Center. Shout out Dan Kelly and all the crew down there in Victoria. That's where I was training judo. And Mick was like kind of the offsider. He was like senior, black belt, um, and an instructor in his own right. But, you know, I think in his late 50s, maybe coming up on 60. And if any new person come in, they just straight away kind of they would go with Mick. They wouldn't join the general class. Yep. He would teach him to break fall, teach him to shoulder roll. Like Perfect. Yeah, and you, I, I believe that this is possibly just a bad budgeting from a jiu-jitsu perspective. There's only one coach. You kind of need an assistant coach, you know, like just in case. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. Well, I think the beauty, say, of your suggestion with the buddy system is that it, it, because when you're, when you're a big gym – you can just have a dedicated beginner's program, right? Of course. And it's just like, oh, we got a whole mat for that and, and an instructor and like this whole curriculum. Just go there and we'll f- teach you all the, all the foundational shit. Sure. But for, a, for the small to mid-sized gym, they don't have that luxury. They don't have the mat space. They don't have the, the, the money to, have, to pay for a second coach, right? Sure. I think that's where a buddy system is, is amazing because you're doing it, you're basically asking one of your students. Now here's, here's we'll talk about, what, how that changes that student's experience in a moment. But yeah, it's, it's like a really efficient way to go, oh, hey, James, can you just take these two new guys through, you know, the basic shit tonight, please? Mm. Um, now, obviously that like you cop a knock, right? Because you're like, I was here to train and now I go teach these guys. But I think like it makes perfect sense to be like, look, we have a club here. We're training this martial art. I have senior students. One of the responsibilities that I put on my senior students is to help bring new people in. And so, yes, every now and again, I'm going to kind of throw a spanner in the works and you won't get to train the way you wanted to, but know that that role is just as important as like whatever, you coaching the class of 16 killers. And it can can rotate though. You know what I mean? Yeah. You wouldn't have to do it every single week, but I guess you would want to almost roster it in a way that provided you had those kind of solid people who are always there. And I I feel like jujitsu lends itself to that. You know, there's just dedicated people. They're there for the barbecue. They always bring, you know, they bring a cake for whoever's birthday it is. Coach didn't. You know, yeah. you, would, you would know they're, those They're people. about the, the community. They are. They love to be a part of it and they want to contribute. Um, but it would be good, as a, I guess, as a culture to cultivate that because let's just say the typical go-to buddy coach isn't there because they're sick or they're on holiday. You've got someone else who's going to step in. And, but it forms better relationships between... Uh, more senior people and more junior people that they know that ah oh, that person even if they don't <laughs> you don't love the your buddy <laughs> that well yeah, yeah you've got the connection yeah and they help you out yeah and, and it's also a really nice acknowledgement of that person's status yeah because when you say to one of your students who's been there for two years hey mate um can you like mentor this guy for this evening mm. that's like oh f- like mm. I'm, I'm a bit of a somebody around yeah, here, you sure. know? You and so, badge. yeah, and so I do think that's also really like, like I think for any coach, I know that a lot of coaches would be hearing this and be like, 
I can't do that. Like I got, you know, my students there to train. You're like, well, they're there for a bunch of things. Mm. And that status is is a really lovely thing. Yeah, it, it is for sure a little bit more work. But what we'd say is, and this is something that I'm I'll tell you what, I'll with. tell you what's more work, is not having new members stick around <laughs> because they have <laughs> a shit experience. Yeah, and you've got to pay a bunch of money and, to get and new members. And you're paying for Facebook ads and you're just burning through all these leads. Exactly. I'll tell you what's not a lot of work is like watching money fill up in your bank account because <laughs> your gym's running well and you're like, wow, how good's this? I can actually pay my bills. <laughs> Sorry to cut you off. No, no, it's spot on. It's spot on. And but here's the thing: I think like we do uh, we do things and they're false economy, right? Like I don't have time to do that because time is money and, and, and all this kind of shit. But actually, by not making effort, you cost yourself somewhere else, mm. and that can be in retention and 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 all kinds of things. But here was a, a second piece of the puzzle I wanted to mention which I found interesting when I was spending a fair bit of time in uh, Brazil at Alliance Sao Paulo with their beginners white belt class, they're not allowed to roll for the first 20 or 30 classes. Right. And I was like, what? Like at the time I was like, that sounds so strange to me because my first experience of jujitsu was get on the mat and roll. And I was yeah. like, but I actually don't even know what the f- this it's is. called Paul Harder and it's a really important piece of the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu culture. Paul Harder? Like yeah. Paulo Harder? Yeah. Is you that need the to guy? experience it on your first night. <laughs> <laughs> Man. Uh, yeah, and then like that's a gym that's known for killers, right? Toughest gym in Brazil, whatever. Yeah. And then it's like, oh yeah, but newbies got to do 30 sessions. Yeah. That's like, that's pretty cool it's in really, my view. It's really interesting because I think uh, at least they understand their own gym. Uh, speaking of Fabio about it, he's like the biggest killer of. Uh, member retention like the thing that stops people training jujitsu is injury getting people to roll too soon results in injury and they've got the stats across hundreds of gyms around the world and that's why they're very strict even though you know that you've got you know men and women chomping at the bit they're seeing people rolling they're like oh i want in on the game no but the great thing is by the time rolling comes around they are f-ing ready and it also incentivizes people to get those first 20 or 30 classes out the way it's like yeah you better be here like every day for a month i mean done ah oh, a few to go yeah yeah, yeah keep, keep, keep going keep coming keep going, keep going because it, it 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 offers that as a reward not like some mystic punishment of like oh i'm getting beat up by a 20 year old you know athletic kid and i'm just some you know late late 40s like professional dude and i'm getting bashed and now my elbow hurts like i think if we can change the way we approach bringing people to jiu-jitsu they will stay longer have a better experience and that makes it better for everyone and and i think i mean you you would know this too even in this place joe the relationships formed on your first day so do you find you get thirsty at training i do i do all the time i'm a sweaty human and i need to hydrate Now, the biggest problem is by the time you're thirsty, it's a little bit late. You need to hydrate. And that's why we got Sodi. Sodi is sponsoring the show. We've got all the colors of the rainbow. Great flavors here. We've got salty citrus, salty pineapple, salty berry, and my favorite, salty grapefruit. And they will be releasing two new mystery flavors soon. So why do we need this? It's going to prevent our muscle cramps. It's going to help our energy delivery. And it's also going to mean you're less tired which is an advantage when you're training. If you want to maximize your jiu-jitsu and feel good when you're rolling, you need to get Sodi. And when you purchase, enter the code BULLETPROOF20 at checkout for 20% off. Oh, yeah. For example, uh, when you start school, you, you, know, you usually remember like who, who was in your class or maybe who was in your year because maybe you weren't always in the same classes. Mm-hmm. If you could do it in flights of sorts, so you could have five new people start and they're all under staff, sergeant, whoever, you know? Like an intake. An intake. And so therefore, it's like a, a, a smaller, less intense version of having to have a whole beginner's class. Yeah. And then you remember everyone who was kind of in your intake. So that's another way to bond the, the newbies. Absolutely. You know, something yeah. like that. And this, I mean, there's, there's so many layers of benefits, say, to that that thing about not rolling straight away. Mm. But one of the huge benefits is that, because I'll tell you what what does piss your students off, is when you go, oh, hey, there's a new guy in the class tonight. And, uh, you know, hey, if you roll with them, just like go easy. And you're like, 
I got this super uncoordinated, <laughs> nervous, and like I'm, I got, th- we got three rounds. Yep. And I got to do one of my rounds with this cat. And you're yep. like, whatever, it's fine, you know, but it hurts, right? Yeah. You want to train. However, when you have this rule of you got to do whatever, 20 classes before you can roll, that person has already learned some jujitsu. Mm. They've had 20 hours of technical instruction. They understand some basic shit. So now when they come into class, they're like, somewhat adequate you know at handling themselves in a role you're like oh they're responding the correct way like it's not i'm not getting kicked in the face yep. and so the experience for your um for your existing members isn't diminished it's better yeah and i i i, I honestly like i just i cringe when i think about the how wild west it is that we still throw people into rolling on their first like even in their first two weeks i'm yeah. like this is wild it's not the way to go it's you know it's the difference between what people want and what they need and and i see this all the time with um just people coming to the gym to train they're like yeah but don't i do heavy back squats today my mates are all training legs you're like uh dude can you touch your toes like can you do a body weight squat like you know like i think there is such a like reality is so divorced from what people expect and you're like, nah, dude, I don't care. You know, oh, but yeah, but I just saw Islam Makachev do that neck choke thing, bro. How good is it? Can I learn that? You're like, no, not today. I would, I would say, though, I reckon that probably a lot of people would, be, would welcome the, hey, you're not rolling tonight. Like, I would say a lot of newbies would probably be shitting themselves at that point. No, I think a lot of people, like a lot of folks would be like, sick, I'm, I'm keen as. But I, I can think of people that would be like, oh, my God, I'm super nervous. But, yeah, okay, if that's what we're doing. No, I think it's a mix. I think it's a mix. Well, that's what I just said. Uh, you said I think a lot of people would be relieved. Yeah, I think a lot of people of each. Like some would want to train and some wouldn't. And for the ones that wouldn't want to, they would be super relieved when you say, hey, I don't want you to roll tonight. Yeah, well, it's, it's totally up to the school to set the expectation, right? Like this is how we do it here. And, and if that works for the person, then – that's really good. And I think, yeah, having a slower approach. And I think it's just having a system of integration. Even though a lot of people nowadays with, you know, the way jiu-jitsu has progressed, for example, they might um, might look at syllabuses and, like, frown on the structure of, say, like a Gracie Baja. But if you go train at a Gracie Baja, you know what the f*** you're working on. If you're a purple belt one stripe, you know exactly what you have to f- do to get that second stripe and even though some people say it's too formulaic that's a form of communication so that's actually really good for the individual it sets the expectation for them it rem- removes the mystery yeah and and so i think by instituting a way not only to integrate someone socially but just like a- allow them to learn many things which aren't just purely technical jujitsu they will become a better member of the community and that makes the community better. Yeah. So I, I feel like it's a, a virtuous cycle if it could be uh, implemented somehow. Yeah, I'd love to hear if there's any gyms that are doing it and how they go. I mean, look, my general observation is that gyms that do a good job of looking after, like when you see a big successful jiu-jitsu gym, yep. you can almost guarantee they do a good job of looking after beginners. Beginners, yeah. And when you see a f- and tough, gnarly small gym where there's quality jujitsu but it, the place never seems to grow they're usually the ones that are doing a shit job of looking after beginners that's right and you know that that gym is probably going to be over in five years yeah it's kind of yeah. as, lo- as long as the coach can like handle the grind of you know running a really tricky small business yeah it's it's such a challenge i think yeah we we forget that uh even though you know, different different senior belts will have less empathy for for new for new people. You know, the classic meme of guys like standing in the corner, like none of these people know that I could choke them all out in five seconds, and then people around them are having a good time, and they're like in the corner, seething with jujitsu contempt for everybody. That basically, if you do not foster the new people coming in, your club dies. Like mm. whatever you say about, oh, I just want champions. I only encourage people who really want it. This kind of old school mentality, which exists in a lot of boxing gyms, some kickboxing gyms as well. Like, fuck all that. Like, if you're not prepared to, like, raise the kids, (laughs) you know, then the family line dies out. So, yeah, I, I think, 
I don't know why it's possibly not discussed more and more is just being able to set up a buddy system and, and have that really help your gym grow. There it is, folks. Look, if you like this kind of chat and you want more of it, we would love for you to share this episode. So go there, click that, share, put it out there on your social media. Or if you think that's too much, maybe just like and subscribe. That helps us. And if you're listening to this on audio, give us a five-star rating. Thank you, folks.